Welcome back to our mobile home renovation. We are outside getting ready for an exciting, huge project. Let me show you what we picked up today. We got a huge pallet of insulation for our attic. This is so exciting because we could finally seal up the house, get it insulated, and get it heated properly. Yeah. So before we get doing this, we want to tell you that it took a lot of work to get to this stage. We had a lot of work to do in the house. Yeah. So let's share the backstory of what it took to get to the point where we can finally blow the insulation in. We are doing a lot of stuff. We're just all over the place trying to get a lot of small, odd jobs wrapped up. Like we just worked on wiring this morning, getting some wires in the attic for all the ceiling lights in the kitchen. I think they're all done so we can finally put this plastic up that's been in our way. Ashley hates this plastic. Oh, it's so annoying. So what we want to do is put the plastic up, get it stapled. It's not long enough for the whole room, but we have more plastic. And we're just gonna keep working, try to get done whatever we can. So I don't have a goal today other than work. We got some plywood to put on the floors. We got insulation to put in the walls. I got wires to put in the walls. Let's, get, let's just do it. Okay. Now I do have one odd job unrelated to the kitchen that I wanna take care of before we cover the ceiling. So let's take a look at it. This is a future desk area. And basically this is gonna be where we have our computer. And I put a light up here for this little nook and I was happy with it when I put it in, but I don't like it anymore. So I'm gonna be removing it. The light would work fine for the desk, but what we did was we decided we were gonna build in or install some cabinets up here, upper cabinets to store stuff above the desk area. And the light is so close that if the cabinet was here and you open the door, you're gonna be hitting your light. So we can't have that, it's just a bad spot for it. We're gonna be taking it out and instead putting in a outlet for under the cabinet lighting. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sometimes plans change and you just gotta roll with it. And this is one of those times where we just decided that it wouldn't that we would have a we found a better way to lay out the room and the lighting. And luckily. The wall is still open. We didn't close it up, so this is gonna be a pretty easy fix. And since the ceiling is open on the other side. This doesn't have to be completed right now, but we just wanna get it out so that we don't have to deal with it later. Because once the plastic's up, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get in here. But that's something that you wouldn't think of, maybe, is cabinets. You don't realize how far a cabinet door can swing out. You know, a cabinet might only be 12 inches deep, but it could have a 16 or 18 inch door. And on our house, we have low ceilings. They're only about seven and a half feet. So if we put cabinets in, they're going to be touching the ceiling. So you don't have much room for a light fixture. Done. I can see your face. Can you? Doug's just covering over the plastic with some flashing tape, sealing it up. Trying to. So I'm just going to take this uh, piece of plywood, scrap, and put it over the hole, screw it from the bottom, so that when I put my patch in the ceiling, I have something solid to hook it to. Uh. Webs my hair. But the first job is insulation because we still have to finish up some plumbing, some drain lines that are in the basement, crawl space, whatever it is. <laughs> and I made this. This is the kitchen sink drain and vent. And it's going to be going right here where that hole is in the floor, where those notches are, and straight up to that notch. So it's going right here. So I just wanted to put my insulation in the wall before putting that in, just to keep it simple. No, I'm kidding. I got to drill a hole down here. <laughs> So 
So I have to go in the crawl space. I don't want to, but I have to. Oh, pretty good. <laughs> what? I'm just looking at that. All right, we got our wire in. This is the only wire I'm worried about right now, just so I can get this plumbing done, insulation in. I hope I don't have to cut this one. I think it'll be too tight. No. The bay's a little bit narrow because it has a double stud. I'm just gonna get an idea of where this is gonna be. This is a project we actually started the other day. And what we did was we cut out the, our nailers. Remember, these are not studs. These are just build out nailers. So I was able to notch the front of them. Uh, when not notch, just cut them straight out. I'm gonna be putting a pipe right through there. So I marked out where the pipe is gonna go. All I gotta do is kinda notch it out with a V groove for the pipe to sit in. Obviously that's too small. I think this gap is closing in on me as I cut it because this insulation is so compressed. It's a little bit fat for this bay. Let's see if my groove is groovy enough. So now that I got this all carved out after chopping away at it forever, I'm just gonna be putting a clamp on here. I happen to have a, a piece of wood back there. So now this is like really secure. Guys, it is sloped, believe it or not. So you can see our drain. Some people have asked us about our drains sloping because they look horizontal, but you can see they do. From the center of this fitting, you can see they have lines on them. It's about 15 and 7 eighths. And over here, we're about 15 and a quarter. Maybe, maybe five sixteenths, but 15 and a quarter, so. Yeah, did you see right there? Just over two feet, two and a half feet. So that should drop, I would say about um, five eighths of an inch. I think that's what we got. So there it is. Slope, quarter inch per foot, going down from the sink, out. Now, I don't want you guys to worry about these studs being notched too far. These are just pieces of wood that I put on the face of my studs to build them out to five and a half inches. So these are just nailers and serve no structural. Yeah, that's just anything. stuff we did for us yeah. for the thicker insulation. Yeah. So we're finally doing insulation, even though I didn't do my wiring yet. I just want to get this insulation out of the way. And there's actually a lot of bays scattered around that won't have any wires in them. So might as well get this insulation off the floor. That should be good. So as you can see, the insulation is going in well, and we still got some more to do, but we got to do the electrical first because all the wiring needs to get done and it's just getting in our way now. So I'm going to have to go into crawl space and Ashley will be up here fishing wires down and I'll be putting them to where they need to go. And hopefully we can get all of the kitchen electrical done today. Yeah. So it'll be all in the walls where it needs to go and and then we can finish up our insulation, and then we'll probably need to buy more. Mm -hmm. But We didn't want to get there. carried away buying too much and have a lot extra. Because if you 
think about it, this is the last, last section of the house that has to be touched. So the rest of the house is all insulated, it's all new. And once we're done here, no more insulation. We're done with demo. Yeah. It's really cool. We're, we're wrapping this whole project up really quick. All right, so we're making progress, and even though we didn't show it, it's just hard to show because I'm literally under the house pulling wire. Ashley's up here uncoiling it, so there's nothing to really show. It's kind of... Boring. Yeah. But we did get it all pulled, stapled nice and neat to the boxes. Ashley just got done cleaning the room. It looks really awesome. Vacuum the floor. It's really a lot better than it was now. Yeah. We finished up the insulation that we had, and I thought we'd need like two more bundles, but it looks like just one more bag will do it. Only yeah. a few more spots left. And it's not that much. Yeah. So I think we only have a couple more goals tonight, and that's to get some more uh, plywood on the floor. We have three sheets sitting over here, three in a partial, so we'll see what we can get done here. And then more plastic on the ceiling. That will really seal this room up. And this is all part of... part of it. hard to slide on that paper. Perfect. To have the clean floor Yeah. going this far. Didn't look like this this morning. We had tiles in here and insulation bags. Mm -hmm. Crazy stuff. So since we're almost done with the house as far as getting it all sealed up goes, we thought this would be a good time to talk about Vapor barriers. We haven't ever really talked about it. We put the plastic on the ceiling, we put the plastic on the walls, and we get a lot of comments about that, about why we're doing it. Is it right? Is it wrong? All kinds of things. So, let us explain the best that we can what, what, what the vapor barriers are all about. Actually, it's not even a vapor, it's a vapor retarder, um, but plastic is pretty much a vapor barrier because it's, mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, where do we begin? This is a tough one. Um, I don't know. The reason, I'm going to talk for us, because we live in the north, and this is very specific to us. And I don't want to mislead people into thinking that you should be doing something a certain way. Vapor barriers are one of those things that's very specific to your area, to your exact location, and even your exact home, and how your home is built. So it's very personal. Yeah. In the north, we live in a cold climate where most of the year is, is heating weather, you know, it's, it's cold out. We, the house is sealed up and it's warm inside, cold outside. And what happens is that warm air carries a lot of moisture from cooking, bathing, breathing, living. So we have hot, humid air inside our house. And if that air goes through our wall and not through like, I mean, it could be air gaps, but it can just, you know, the moisture can kind of penetrate the drywall in your house. And if it gets into the wall or into the ceiling where it reaches the cold part, the cold outside, it can condense and create water. So then you get moisture, water inside your walls and that rots your house out. In the north, we put a vapor barrier inside the walls. It's pretty universal that the, that, that happens on the walls. Mm -hmm. And that keeps the moisture from getting inside your walls and turning into water and turning into rot. Down south, you usually put the vapor barrier on the outside because usually it's the hot humid air outside and it's cold inside with your AC running so you don't want that moisture coming in so you put the vapor barrier on the outside and a lot of places in the south or mid south going north you, you won't even have one at all so that's why we put the plastic on the walls and then a lot of people are wondering why we put it on the ceilings because that's really uncommon it's uncommon because it's not usually required by code and people usually only do what code, code tells them to do mm -hmm. The reason that we're putting plastic on our ceiling, a lot of people say the house has to breathe. You can't have plastic on the ceiling because it's supposed to breathe through the ceiling. But the problem is that houses used to breathe. Because they had like thinner insulation or no insulation. But since we live in the north and we heat and the air does carry moisture and you think, well, it's got to go someplace, we would rather it go out through like mechanical means, like, like fans, vents, stuff like that not through our attic and the reason for this is because we're adding a lot of insulation in our attic it's really deep and what happens is the moisture if it gets through the drywall into that insulation it starts getting it, it stays there there's not enough heat flow there's not enough movement because it's so thick to bring the moisture up through and out the vents 
And so the, it just sits in the insulation. Yeah, it never actually leaves your attic. And even if it does get through the insulation, the attic is cold. You see, in the past, attics were poorly insulated. You lose a lot of heat out of your ceiling, and that creates airflow in your attic because the warm air is rising out the vents. And as the warm air rises out, it takes the moisture with it and brings it out of your house. So that's how the house would breathe through the attic. The moisture would come out. But when you have a lot of insulation in your attic, the air in your attic is the same temperature as outside. There is literally no flow. Mm -hmm. It's stale air. So if moisture gets into your attic, like we said, it sits in your insulation and it's not being carried anywhere else. And you end up with condensation in your insulation or condensation on the bottom side of your roof. Yeah. It's just not bringing the, insul the, the air out. So that's why we put it on the ceiling because when you live in the north with thick insulation, you can actually end up with moisture problems in your attic if you don't have one. Now, if you have thin insulation and creating kind of a flow of air, heat rising, then it's it might be okay. It might be okay to not have the vapor barrier because it will carry that moisture out of your house. So it's just, like I said, it's a very specific thing to your home, to your location. It's all about that hot and cold touching. And most people will not need this on their ceiling. Many people will need it on their walls by code, whether it's the inside or outside, depending on your location. Yep. Good? <laughs> yeah. Did that cover it all? Hope so. So yeah, I hope that explained it, that um, we have a reason for putting uh, the vapor bearer on our ceiling. It makes sense for us here in this house with the insulation. Yeah. We don't want moisture in our attic, so that's how we stop it. So speaking of plastic, we're going to be finishing it now on the ceiling. Yep. Alright guys, we got a lot done today. We got insulation in, wiring door done, the f the wow I can't talk. Okay. <laughs> the floor down, plastic up. Yeah. Um a lot of cleaning, some behind the scenes stuff maybe here and there. Just getting a lot done. We got a lot more coming though. It feels good to at least get this much sealed up because it's gonna make the house so much better. Yeah. More comfortable. And once we get drywall we can put it up and then finish our blow in insulation. Yeah, the weather is really starting to turn, so it's gonna get cold, so we gotta get working on this fast. We have a lot of little jobs to do, so I'm just gonna try to tackle whatever I can. And in fact, we've been doing a lot of other little jobs for the last couple days, so we'll try to share them all in this video, get you caught up to wh how the progress is going on the house and where we're at today. Right now, I'm just getting ready to go up into the attic. You can hear the rooster crowing over here. As I was saying, I'm about to go up in the attic so I can just tie up those uh, loose vents that I was working on. We got our plumbing vents going up, but they're not going out, so I have to get them out. Then we might run to the store, get some insulation, see what else we can get done today. We'll see. So the room is really coming together. We got the plastic secured. I taped all the seams, all the little holes and rips that we made, some staples that pulled out. I also cut out my light openings seal those up, tape my seam up here. Um, so the plastic on the ceiling is good. Finished up that end. I've been walking around just finishing up loose ends. I got the venting in the attic all done. Um, going out the roof, secure. Everything's gonna be good for winter, so I'm happy about that. I feel like I could have done the venting a little bit better. It didn't come out as good as I wanted to. Um, it's just, it was difficult because of maintaining the slope and going up. Uh, through our shallow roof It was just not much room to work in right now We're actually getting ready to go to the store because now we got to get drywall on the ceiling We got to get some more insulation. I don't know if we're doing it at the same time, but we're gonna get drywall a little more plywood for the floor and if we can get the ceiling drywalled then we can insulate and then Awesome, we can get this whole house heated
I gotta put my butt boards in. And if you guys don't know what these are, this is just a little drywalling trick. That really helps you get smooth ceilings. Look at the progress I made on this ceiling. We got a lot of drywall up last night. As you can see, it's coming together. I really got most of the ceiling done and all I have left is this little strip going straight back to the bedrooms all the way down the hallway. So not too bad at all. Actually, I would have kept going, but I decided I needed some little plastic trim pieces to go on the edge of the drywall because the drywall is gonna be meeting the paneling and I, don't want to, I want a finished edge that I can seal with some caulk and not, because I'm not going to be taping those seams. So before I put those up, I got to run to the store, but I wanted to share with you guys the progress and what we're working on today. Now over here, I'm especially happy that I at least got this part of the ceiling done, because this is going to be our laundry area, and we really need to get some laundry washed. We don't feel like going to the laundromat again, so I'm going to clear out this wood that's in my way and get these walls done. Because if I can put some drywall up on the walls, um, we can slide the washing machine in here and just start using it again. There's always a ton of little jobs that we can get done. So as you can see, I got my electrical box in, my water box in for the washer, and I also got these boxes, and this is going to be for the dryer plug and the dryer vent. I don't have to worry about blocking those off. I can put the drywall up because the back side is going to stay open, so I'll just take care of those later. I installed this dryer box and this is going to be where the duct goes up, but it does have some flex. So I think I'm going to put in a piece of wood here just to give it some strength. I'm happy with that. Now it's really solid, not going anywhere. And let's see what else I can do. I think I'm gonna start shimming up with my drywall shims this wall because I got a lot of weird things on the wall and I just want the drywall to lay flat. So I just feel like it'll be worth it to just throw some shims on here. So normally I wouldn't have to worry about this, just going over a single outlet or something, but shimming out the wall really will help this wall, like so the drywall can run over these flanges a little easier. We got the metal flange here sticking out, now that's flush. We got these nailing plates, now that's flush. You know, right here, this metal, that's flush. I don't mind bumping over one or two, but with this much on the wall, I just thought it'd be better to shim it out, make it all flush, and that way we have less chance of cracking the drywall. All right, I 
I got my lines all marked out. Let's hope this is correct. This top piece went in perfectly. My cuts are dead on. I'm really, really happy with it. Let's get working on this bottom piece. I think this one is pretty easy. Just got to cut out this little dryer box. A little tiny bit here. I'm not going to secure this piece yet, but I got this wall done, so let me screw this in. Alright guys, look at I got my piece screwed in. That looks really good. The reason I left this one off is because I wasn't really sure how I wanted to work with this spot around the box. I was just going to caulk it in after it was done. But I think since I have to go to the store tonight anyway, I'm gonna pick up some kind of vinyl J molding trim. I don't know, I'll show you when I get it, but it's gonna go around this and it'll be a nice clean finished edge around the metal. I don't know, I'll try that. So for now, it's looking pretty awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and get this outlet wired up so we can hook up the washing machine and then we're heading to the store, right? All right guys, I got it. Here's my J channel. And it's just a piece of vinyl that clips over the edge of your drywall to make a finished edge. See that? Finally install this. This looks awesome. Look at that frame. That's going to be a lot easier to caulk and seal than a raw drywall edge. And this whole section is 100% complete. I'm so excited about this because that means I can officially get the washing machine in here, get it hooked up, and we can start doing laundry. Well, we are still at it, ready to finish up the drywall on the ceiling. We went to the store and picked up our J channel. We need a butt board, three feet. We have a lot of new subscribers, so I'll go over this quickly again. This is what I call a butt board, and I use it every time I do drywall on the ceiling to give myself a smooth and really good looking ceiling. Basically, when you have a large flat surface like a ceiling, you're gonna end up with butt joints with your drywall, which means the tapered ends don't come together, but instead the, the short ends of the drywall come together. And normally when you do that, you have to tape it with the tape and the compound over it and you create a hump and it's really hard to get a nice smooth ceiling. So I make these and it's just a piece of three quarter inch OSB with some 
about 16th inch shims on either side, okay? Dimensions, about nine inches wide and as wide as my drywall. Basically what I do is, when I hang my drywall on the ceiling, instead of ending those butt seams on a joist like, nor like people normally would, I end them in between the joists. So here's my joist, the ends float in the center of the, stud of the uh, joist bay. And I join those two flooding butt ends on the center of this board. And what it does is it causes those ends to pull upward and create a taper on that flat end. And then you could tape it just like a normal seam and you'd never see it. So I hope that made sense, but I'll show you it in action. So there it is, attached halfway onto the end of my drywall. And you can see there's this, the joist. So I'm not on the joist. You can see the lines right between them both. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this sheet up normal now. But when I put my next sheet on, they're gonna be secured in the middle. And you'll see how this is actually gonna pull the sheets up. It's gonna be really cool. Slide it on there. Like if somebody says, how's my shirt look? You'd say, it looks good for my house. So check this out, we're making some good progress finally today. And the ceiling is going up, it's looking really awesome. But unfortunately, I gotta put this away. I can't use the drywall lift anymore because the hallway is just too narrow for it. And did you guys see? I hooked up our washing machine last night, so now Ashley can wash the laundry again. We had to go to the laundromat a few times, it's really inconvenient. And I got a couple more sheets I gotta put up down the hallway and I'll just have to do it by hand. So hopefully this isn't too difficult. That's the question. I'm gonna hold it up and screw it up at the same time. So I'm gonna get it up there. You hand me the drill. Screw ready to go. And you gotta have screws ready to go to hand me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. That is not lining up. Well, it's okay. Tall enough to see it there. No, you didn't do anything wrong. It's fine. It's hard to tell. I can shave that down from here. That's okay. I gotta notch that out anyway. I thought it was gonna break. So we had to take a lunch break, and while I was cooking lunch, Maverick must have been in here. Because look at this. This is so cute. He must have watched me trace my light box. I got another sheet to cut and we got just one more to go down here. So if I can get that up, I'll be so happy. I can't believe I forgot that. No, I can. Okay. That's getting better. So now we're here, we're ready, we're gonna get it done. This was a beautiful day and it got really overcast, so hopefully it holds out and just, we can get it's it. It's still pretty nice out, it just, yeah. it was warmer earlier. So Ashley's on the machine duty. She's gonna be loading the hopper with the insulation. I'm gonna be in the attic, blowing it in. So I'm gonna climb up there. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna try to film. Last time we blew insulation in, I tried to capture it, but as soon as that machine starts blowing, it's crazy up there. You can't see anything and it destroys the camera. So you're gonna have to just imagine me being covered in dust. <laughs> okay, you ready? And this time we got a hundred feet. Last time we had 50 and it wasn't really long enough.
So I pretty much have to do this entire side of the house. Only Belle's room, the bedroom at the very end is done. So there's a lot to do and then a little bit over here on this side. Whoa. So we didn't show much of the insulation because it's just stuffing a machine and blowing it in. It's pretty basic. Yeah, we did a video about that but weeks I will, ago. But I will tell you that we worked late. In fact, when we were almost done, we ran out of insulation. We actually planned on having more than we needed, but we didn't have enough. Somehow we just went through it. Yeah. So we had to hurry up and get in the car. It was probably an hour before the store closed and we had to get in drive to the store and buy, I think we bought six more bundles. Eight. eight. Eight more bundles. And then drove back home, and it's not a short drive. I mean, it takes a long time. Yeah. And then we hurried and got up there, because we only had the machine rental for 24 hours. So, so we didn't want to wait till the next morning and then yeah. try to do all that and then yeah. r risk running out of time. So we got back here, we're in the dark. Ashley was in the dark loading the machine. <laughs> and we finished up blowing up the blowing in the attic insulation so the whole attic is completely insulated throughout the whole house right now yes and that means that we can finally have our heat on i don't know if you can hear it probably not but we have a little space heater blowing it feels so good yeah we have spots all wired up for all of our permanent wall heaters but as you can see the walls aren't done yet so we can't hook those up so right now we just got plug-in heaters and the house feels good so this has been like a crazy crazy time that we've had getting ready to this point mm -hmm. we've had some chilly days you guys have seen us wearing our jackets when we're working in here and we had to just do so many little jobs yeah that you don't expect probably even more than we showed you in the clip because it's just so much continual work mm -hmm. to do there's stuff we're not even filming just random little things but now we're at the point where the ceilings are up insulated we have a warm house we can all start relaxing taking our time a little bit more and getting the jobs done a little smoother yeah and that's gonna be cool and, and now, it's a lot easier to work in the warmth than in the cold yeah and now we don't feel as bad about doing more tiling and stuff so we have lots of projects coming up we're working on the kitchen we got a bunch of new framing behind us right now that we'll be sharing soon um we're still waiting for our back door that should be in in November, they're saying. Mm -hmm. And we got a bunch of drywall outside on the trailer to start sealing up these walls. It's going to be fun, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not. And I guess that's about all we have for now. So until next time, take care. Bye.